This is a new 32 inch 4K UHD display made by Allogic. It has a native resolution of 3840 by 2160, supports USB-C connectivity with power delivery so you can connect it to a laptop and keep that laptop charged while using it. It has a backlit IPS panel with IPS standing for in-plane switching, which is fairly common uh, with most uh, displays today. It has a contrast ratio of 3000 to one, support for HDR 400, 138 pixels per inch, and a refresh rate of 60 hertz. Now, all of those specifications are fairly standard, right? I mean, if you were shopping for a 32 inch 4K display, there are a number of options out there from a bunch of different companies. And quite frankly, it's not enough, you know, for me to spend time reviewing it if it's more or less the same as, you know, every other 32 inch 4K display that's out there. Unless there's something unique about it. Unless there's something different. Well, you can't tell by looking at it, but there is. This is actually a 32 inch 4K touchscreen compatible display that works with macOS. I'm able to pinch and zoom just like I'm using a phone or, a, or an iPad. I mean, this thing is essentially a giant iPad. It's not unusual in the Windows you know, side of things, but in the macOS world, it is. It's something that Apple for whatever reason has never pursued, at least not yet, at least not at the time of this video. I can like come in and, you know, dodge and, and burn and, you know, just paint like right on top of the image. So here's the thing. I have no idea if this is actually beneficial, if this actually makes a difference. I mean, it's cool. It's different. It's new, it's unique. It is something I've never experienced before. So what I'm gonna do is uh, use this display here for a few days. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna use it for all of my photo editing and just for you know general desktop computer use as well. All right, so it's been a few days, um, a few rather interesting days. I've learned a lot about this display since the beginning of this video, and I definitely have uh, more to um, more to share with you. One quick correction from earlier at the beginning of this video, I pronounced the company's name as Allogic. I don't know why. Contact the company, and it's A Logic. So A Logic from this point forward. The default color space of this display is P3, also known as Display P3. That's what, you know, Apple calls theirs. It's all basically the same thing. P3 is a wider, larger color gamut than the old sRGB color space, which is much smaller. There are baseline 27 and 32 inch displays, which are the least expensive. Then there are models that incorporate webcams for $200 more respectively. And then finally, uh, models with webcams and touchscreens for $400 more respectively. All of the A-Logic Clarity displays come with a tilt and height adjustable stand, and this stand is very nice. It is well constructed, it is well designed, it's very hefty, and you can also rotate the screen into a portrait orientation. All of the Clarity displays have built-in speakers. Unfortunately, the speakers are rather lousy. Really, they're just there as kind of like backup, I think. But for like daily use, no. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna want to use the speakers and the uh, the webcam. So the webcam is really cool. The webcam, uh, as you can see, it pops up here at the top of the display. It's built into the housing of the of the frame, so it automatically pops up. You know when you need it, when it's activated, and when you're done. You know doing a Zoom call or doing whatever it is that you're doing, it retracts and it you know folds right back down into the screen. There was a bit of an issue with this um, in macOS not working at first, but I downloaded the firmware for the display, updated the firmware, and yeah, and now it, now it works fine. Uh, one thing to note is that if you do have some kind of light up here, yeah, the webcam's definitely going to get in the way of that. So that's something to keep in mind. The finish on the front is glossy. And unfortunately, there is not a non-reflective matte finish option. I would much prefer the latter. I've always preferred matte screens as opposed to glossy. All of the A-Logic Clarity displays are HDR compatible. So if you enable HDR output in your display, preferences in your Mac OS or Windows operating system, and then uh, pull up the menu here and enable it in the display preferences. And now it looks correct. And now it looks stunning. Dynamic range, the blacks and the whites are, are really pretty amazing. It's, it's pretty stunning to look at. If you can find like some really good HDR content, like on YouTube or, oh, I've been there. Um, if you can find it on YouTube or like, you know, through a streaming service, it's, um, yeah, it looks really nice. The bit depth of this uh, screen here, the 32 inch model is 8 bit, while the 27 inch clarity displays are 
10 bit, which is fine for like general purpose use. But if you edit, you know, digital raw images like I do, 8 bit is going to cause problems with, you know, banding in your gradients, you know, the tonal roll off, you know, is not going to be, you know, quite as good. It is physically incapable of displaying the same range of tones and colors as a 10 bit. Uh, display. So for me, that's rather unfortunate. I'm sure for some of you that may be reason enough to not even consider the 32 inch model. It would be better to get the 27 inch with the 10 bit. And personally, I kind of feel like if you don't mind me getting on a soapbox for a second, like I kind of feel like if you're going to put out six different displays all under the same clarity name, they should all have the same bit depth. Like it, it doesn't make sense to me that the 32 inch model has lower bit depth than the 27 inch. This display should be uh, you know, 10 bit, I think. Color accuracy and coverage. Well, A-Logic claims in the specifications for their 32 inch Mac screens, they provide 102 uh, percent coverage of P3, 98 percent coverage of sRGB and 110 percent coverage of Adobe RGB with a Delta E value less than one. Uh, if you don't know what the latter means, Delta E is a measurement uh, that compares, you know, the, a color that you see on screen against like the actual color, like, you know, in the real world, how accurate is the depiction of that color? And generally speaking, if Delta E of a color is less than two, uh, it, it's generally considered to be perfect, like the human, or at least perfect to the human eye. Like the human eye can't really, you know, it can't really detect the difference when the number is less than two. So I tested um, the display using uh, two calibrators. Yes, I have two. Uh, this is a Data Color Spider X Pro here. And this is the new uh, Calibrite Display Pro HL. And with the Spider X here, I got 91% coverage of P3, 100% coverage of sRGB, and 97% coverage of Adobe RGB. So obviously those numbers are a little bit lower than what A-Logic um, is claiming in their marketing, especially that P3 number. I did ask A-Logic about this, about gamut coverage to clarify what was going on. And they asked their engineers and they got back in touch with me and they said that there were two reasons why my numbers were lower. One, because I'm using just a general consumer uh, data color Spider X Pro calibrator. That's, you know, I mean, it costs like, I don't know what, like 150 bucks, something like that. Whereas they use uh, high-end industrial calibrators, uh, theirs being a Minolta CA410, which is so expensive, uh, you have to get a quote for it. And I found it on eBay used for like $8,000. So second reason uh, is because the calibrator that I was using, and I guess other calibrators for that matter too, uh, they're measuring using the CIE 1931 color space. This is getting really nerdy, I apologize. Whereas they measure uh, color gamut using the more modern CIE 1976 uh, color space. I'm going to trust their, uh, <laughs> I'm going to trust their judgment on this. I'm going to trust um, what it is that they're claiming. I don't have any reason to doubt it, but just know that if, you know, that if you calibrate the display and you see similar numbers, that's why. And then I also calibrated using this Display Pro HL here, and this one allows you to test uh, brightness uniformity, like how even is brightness from corner to corner and edge to edge. The more even it is, you know, the better, obviously. And unfortunately, this 32 inch model uh, struggles a little bit, especially up here at the top. The top of the display is darker. And it's not the kind of thing that you you really notice, like, you know, when looking at it, at least I don't you know, with with my own eyes. But you know, with a very accurate device like this, well, it becomes clear that there are some screen uniformity uh, issues and it's not quite ideal, unfortunately. But color accuracy wise, this is actually a very color accurate display. I mean, you know, I was able to confirm using the Display Pro here that the average Delta E value is less than one as they claimed it would be, which is good because you want your colors to be more accurate. And there was definitely a difference with this display after it was calibrated. After that P3 mode was calibrated, the reds looked way too vibrant, way too saturated out of the box. And it looked much better after calibration. Okay, so let's talk about the touchscreen capabilities of this display, because if you are a macOS user like I am, this is wild. This is so completely different. It feels so weird to be using 
Mac OS in this way. You do have to download some drivers. They're called UPDD drivers, I believe is what they're called. You have to download some special drivers and some software, install them on your computer. And yeah, there are some like low level security things you have to enable. And unfortunately the screen is not um, Apple Pencil compatible. That would be cool. Uh, maybe someday if Apple actually makes a touch screen, the pencils would be compatible, but you have to use the uh, stylus from a logic or a Microsoft stylus compatible pen. But it is different from say like a Wacom tablet where you have pressure sensitivity and you're able to control the strength and the like the density of what it is that you're doing, which is a thing and like painting applications in Photoshop and the like. It's more like a, like a handheld mouse. This thing is gigantic. I mean, it feels like a big canvas, like a giant drawing table. And when you have, you know, this big image in front of you, it almost feels like you're touching like the actual pixels in the image. And I know that may sound um, like a little much, but it, it's, it's basically what it feels like. I mean, it literally feels like the image is in front of you and you're like interacting with it directly. But this is one of those things where it's cool and it's great until it's not, until you need to do something else, until you need to like, you know, navigate the menus, until you need to like manipulate the tone curve adjustment panel, you know, in Photoshop or do anything that involves like small pixel precise movements because the user interface of this, you know, the Mac OS operating system and you know, much of Windows for that matter, they're designed for mice. They're designed for ultra precise, pixel precise uh, movements and gestures, not you know, not fat fingers and not not a stylus and not being touched in this way. I mean, that's why, you know, iOS and mobile applications are designed differently than desktop applications. They're, it's just a completely different animal, which means that applications like Adobe Lightroom are, you know, kind of a non-starter, unfortunately, because so much of the interface are all those tiny little sliders, all those, you know, little, little interface elements that are just rather cumbersome to use with a pen. And, you know, they just feel a little bit weird on a touchscreen. It doesn't feel quite right. But when you are in a space and like a creative space, when you're using brushes and pens and it feels amazing and it feels really, really nice. Now, something important I should clarify, the ability to raise and lower the stand, like you see, you know, like I'm doing right now, this stand is different than the standard default stand that comes with the display. When you buy the display, it comes with a with that tilt and height adjustable stand, but this one is a separate item. This is a an accessory that costs about $200. Like the other stand, very durable, very well built, uh, great construction, it works well, looks nice on a desktop. The problem with the stand though, is that this is as high as the display gets. The bottom of the screen should be right around here so that then like, you know, looking directly into the center of the screen, not down at the screen. I mean, this has to be something that you really want to do and you spend the majority of your time with the display in a low angled position like this. If you do, great. Uh, you know, but if you're, you know, someone who wants to go back and forth and uh, between, you know, just using this as a general monitor. And then when you want to get creative, you lower it down and using it and use it. Just know that the stand, unfortunately, does not lift the display quite as high. All right, so it's now been a few days more and I've had more time to use this uh, this 32 inch A-Logic Clarity display. Overall, um, in general, it's getting rather crowded in here. I think this is a good 32 inch 4K desktop display with a glossy screen, if that is what you are currently shopping for. But, you know, unfortunately there are uh, some cons. I wish that this was offered with a non-reflective matte finish on the front so that, yeah, so that you wouldn't get this. For me, you know, because I do creative work, I've just never really cared for glossy. So I think A-Logic would be smart to offer a, a non-reflective matte finish version of this uh, display, similar to what other companies do. But the biggest con for me with these 32 inch A-Logic Clarity displays is their bit depth, is the fact that they are only eight bit as opposed to 10 bit, which means they're only capable of displaying just over 16 million colors as opposed to just over 1 billion. And I know both of those sound like really big numbers, a lot of colors, but when you shoot digital raw images, raw files contain a lot of data. They pack in a lot of color information. There are you know, competing displays out there on the market made by other companies that are also 32 inch 4K with very similar specifications, but those displays are not only 10 bit, but there are some models that actually cost less. Is the $200 webcam worth paying more for? 
Maybe. I mean, I think it depends on you and what it is that you prioritize. I mean, if you like the clean, minimal appearance of this, then it might be worth it. But if you are just looking at specifications alone, well, you can find a 12 megapixel you know, webcam from a number of different companies out there and actually costs less than this $200 upgrade as well. And then there is the touchscreen. I mean, this, without question, is the most unique feature of this display. It's not as unique in the Windows world, but if you need a large 32-inch 4K display for a macOS machine, like you are setting up a display somewhere, like an interactive screen, like I'm thinking of things like, like kiosks or presentations or conferences or maybe some kind of like museum exhibit. Well, that alone may be reason enough for you to get this display. Maybe this will change in the future, but right now this is your main option. If you want a touchscreen compatible 32 inch 4K display that works with Mac OS, this is it. When it comes to the creative use uh, of the touchscreen display, I very much enjoyed it. It's just a completely different feeling when you are, you know, working in Photoshop with brushes and you know, you're using the stylus and you're drawing on the screen. It feels just so very, you know, different. And I'm someone who's tried external tablets in the past and all that, and they've never really clicked with me, mainly because of that problem I talked about earlier, where they're great when you're doing creative work, but then sometimes you have to do something else. And it's the something else that causes friction and causes you know, this experience to be less than ideal. And unfortunately, you know, to make matters more uncomfortable, it doesn't stand up high enough. Like it sits like only like, I don't know, what is that? Like maybe like an inch and a half off the table. And because the screen is so large, you know, 32 inches, it feels like it's, you know, sitting even lower, at least to me it does. So creatively speaking with the touchscreen, I think this is one of those things that you really have to be committed to. And you like the idea of being able to draw literally on screen, even though you don't have pressure sensitivity. And if that's enough, and if that's appealing to you, well, and, and you're a Mac OS user, especially, I think this is a this is a very compelling option for that. So I hope this video was helpful. If you are currently shopping for a display and you are considering the A-Logic Clarity display and you were curious to know more about it, I hope this was helpful. And as always, just remember, you know, this video is just one person's opinion. This is just my opinion uh, and experience using the display. And you know, other people may have a completely different viewpoint uh, compared to mine, completely different experience. So do some research, do look around and see what other people are saying because um, you know, I think it's, it's an important thing to do. If you'd like to check out more information about this display here or the 27 inch model of the A-Logic Clarity display, actually all of the models, I will link to all of them down below in the video description. And I'm also going to link to the other things that I talked about in this video too, like the, like the calibrators and all that stuff. Anything you saw in this video will be linked down below. So that's it everyone. Thanks so much uh, for being here. See you in the next one.